Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War by Axel Erickson. Before presidency. Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809 in, in Harding County, Kentucky. His parents were Nancy and Thomas Lincoln, and he had two siblings, Sarah Lincoln and Thomas Lincoln. In 1816, his family moved to southern Indiana. The only formal schooling he got was three brief periods of time throughout his early life since he had to work to help his family. In 1831, he moved to New Salem and became a shopkeeper and postmaster. That eventually failed, and he became a supporter of the Whig Party. He won the election to be a part of the Illinois State Legislature in 1834. This is when he started to become a politician and to be noticed. He opposed slavery, and he wanted to expand the United States, where he wanted to focus on cities more than ag agriculture. He moved to Springfield and worked as a lawyer. This is how he met Mary Todd, and they started a date. They got married in 1842 and had four children in total, Robert, Edward, William, and Thomas. Lincoln was elected into the House of Representatives in 1846. He was unpopular with Illinois voters because of his views on the Amer Mexican-American War. When Stephen Douglas announced the Kansas-Nebraska Kansas Act in 1854, Lincoln debated against a large crowd where he denounced slavery and called it a violation of the Declaration of Independence. Lincoln joined the Republican Party in 1856 because of its, of its opposing views of slavery. In June of 1856, he gave his famous House Divided speech. Lincoln faced Douglas in lots of debates, gaining popularity among the nation. After delivering another speech in New York City, Lincoln became even more famous and was chosen as a Republican candidate for president in 1860. In the election, Lincoln versed Douglas, who was the candidate for the Democratic Party, and Lincoln won. Lincoln's presidency during the Civil War. When Lincoln was elected the 16th president of the United States in 1861, seven southern states succeeded from the country and formed the Confederate States of America. When Lincoln resupplied Fort Sumter, South Confederate batteries opened fire onto the fort, and this is how the Civil War began. When Fort Sumter fell, President Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteer troops to help fight back against the South Confederacy in 1861. Now, Lincoln's pres presidency is a wartime presidency where the executive branch can supersede the two other branches. Lincoln was now in charge of how the war was going. He mostly cared about preserving the Union, no matter the consequences. When Lincoln used force against the Confederacy, four other states succeeded. President Lincoln named George McClellan as the new commander of the Union Army, and General Robert E. Lee was announced the new commander of the Confederate Army. When McClellan failed to follow Lee's retreat during the Battle of Antietam, Lincoln removed him from command. At the Battle of Antietam, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. The Emancipation Proclamation is a document where Lincoln pronounces all the slaves in the Confederacy and contested areas in the South to be freed. It also announced that black men can serve with the Union Army. European public opinion prefers Lincoln and, and the Union than Lee and the Confederacy. After the Emancipation Proclamation, it was the Union's goal to free the slaves that were in the Confederate South. After General Ulysses S. Grant captured Vicksburg, Mississippi, Lincoln announces him as his Lieutenant General. On November 19, 1863, Lincoln said the famous Gettysburg Address on the Gettysburg Battlefield. Lincoln offers a, a full pardon to the Southerners that take the prescribed oath. In, in 16... In 1864, Lincoln opened for peace negotiations with Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederate States of America. This failed. Lincoln was nominated f for his second term and was to go against the former commander, George McClellan. Lincoln won for his second term of presidency with a 55% popular vote. Lincoln influenced the House of Representatives to improve the 13th Amendment, which states that all slaves are freed and that owners are not compensated. They eventually passed the amendment in 1865 and slaves were now free. On April 9, 1865, Lee surrendered to Grant, making the ending of the Civil War. Lincoln's death. Six days after the end of the Civil War, Lincoln went to the Ford Theater and was shot by John Milk's Booth, a Confederate sympathizer and an actor at the theater. Lincoln dies the next day, and the former Vice President Andrew Johnson is now the 17th President of the United States. After Booth shot Lincoln, he yells, Six Sempre. Tyrannus, the South is avenged. Booth was found in a barn ten days later, where he died by either shooting himself or someone else shot him. Lincoln's death caused all the joy coming from the end of the Civil War to, dis to disappear. After seven days of mourning, Lincoln's coffin was carried on a slow funeral train that went back to Springfield, Illinois. It traveled through small towns, big cities, and through the countryside. Thousands, thousands of Americans saw the train and were very emotional.
Abraham Lincoln was able to leave that union during the Civil War and the Civil War and free slaves under the 13th Amendment. We should remember the 16th president for his just views and what he was able to do.